Hello all, so this is our third and final tutorial on ESP and Zboard. So as you can see on the screen, uh, on Zboard whenever I am turning on some switches, you can see the corresponding LEDs are also turning on. And it seems like uh, this is a simple design where the processor is reading the switch position and turning on the LEDs. But in reality, what is happening is all these are happening uh, over the network. So whenever I change the switch position, that information is going to a client. Then the client will send a packet with the same switch position information back to our Z port over the network and he captures that and turns on the corresponding LED. Okay, so again, this is some kind of uh, server client based communication and this is what we are going to see in this tutorial. Uh, how to use this ESP based communication programmatically not using a browser but how can we do it uh, through a program so this is the python program which i am using to communicate uh, with the zboard and this program it, it is nothing specific to zboard you can use the same program uh, if you want to communicate with any uh, server okay, be it zboard or arduino or raspberry we can use the same program uh, the programs which communicate over the network, uh, we call them uh, socket programming. Sockets are these software entities uh, which are the abstract model for interfacing with network. So again, not specific to Python, uh, C, C++, you can use anywhere. Basically, Python is using these low-level sockets, but they are using a wrapper for doing it. Uh, so again, those who do not know Python, don't worry, I will quickly go through it in one minute. So what is happening is, okay, at the top you can see I have specifying the IP address of the server uh, with whom I want to communicate. Okay, so now it is hard coded here, but uh, later we can give it through uh, command prompt as an argument and the port number also. So AT always represents an HTTP server, and we are running an HTTP server uh, on our ESP. Okay, so that's what these two. Then we are going to an infinite while loop where we are constantly sending and receiving packets. So in, in network communication, in especially client server model, the communication is always initiated by a client. So he will make a request uh, with some information and the server will respond to that request. And once the server completes the request, once he serves that request, he will close that connection and uh, later, once the client receives the data, he also uh, closes the connection. So that is the protocol. So this is where we are creating so-called the socket. So these two arguments here, it is basically saying we are going to use TCP IP protocol over internet for communication. Okay, so this is here saying like we are going to use IP packets and this is saying we are using stream type. That means either TCP or UDP. But for HTTP, we are going to use TCP as the transport layer packet. So we created so-called socket. And here we are making a connection with the server, in our case ESP, using his IP address as well as port number. Okay. So here we are setting a timeout. That means when we are trying to communicate, if there is no response from the server after this much time, it is in second, uh, we will terminate the connection. Otherwise, we'll be stuck in an infinite loop. Okay, so here we are creating a message. So I want to know the switch position first so that I can send a packet to turn on the corresponding LEDs. So this we have seen before. So I'm just making a query kind of thing. Only requirement is it should include the word switch in our case. Okay, so switch. And this is where I am sending this message to the server. So send all is the method we are using and this message this is in a string format that should be converted into a specific format called the byte stream for python so that conversion is done by this function encode so he will take the string and convert it into uh, a byte stream a stream of bytes like a character array. so we send that message to the server this is a blocking function that means it will return only after sending this entire message if the message is not sent within this much time, uh, he will terminate the connection. Okay. So once we have sent, here we are waiting for the server to respond. So in our particular case, our server is supposed to respond 
with the corresponding position of the switches. So we are waiting here using this receive function and this parameter basically saying what is the maximum amount of data that you are expecting. I am putting like 1024, okay? but we are expecting very few bytes. And once we get the data, this is also a blocking function. So it will return only after getting some data. Need not be 1024, yeah, some packet. Okay, once he gets the packet, we will come here and whatever data is received, we will just print it. So again, similar to encode, you have to do decode to convert it back to string format. And we print it after that we close the connection. Uh, so in client server model, this is how it will work. Okay, you make a request, you get the response, you close the connection. For next communication, you start a, a new connection. We are waiting for some time, so I'll explain why this is needed. And we are checking in the response from the server whether the term invalid is there. That means server is saying you have made an invalid request, so we can't do anything with that data. Uh, we have to go back and send a new packet. Okay. So if there is no invalid, that means uh, the packet has some valid information, we'll create a new packet, same way we connect and we make a new message. The message is LED equal to and the last eight characters from whatever data the server sent. Okay. So remember from previous tutorial, the server, he responds with the current switch position and those position will be the last eight characters in that message. So that's why we are taking the last eight characters and decode it, create the message and send that message. To the server so it will be like led equal to followed by the switch position and after that again we are waiting for some response from the server once we get the response uh, we print it and we close the connection again wait for some time and go back to the loop and continue so we'll go back and do this so this try except block again it's a feature of python so if any exception happens if any error occurs while running this code what he does is he will run this part, okay? So there can be error when you are sending message because there is some timeout, when you are receiving message, when you are closing message, when you are connecting, all these can uh, create some error. So if any error happens, he will come to this block, the exit block, and he will print what is the exact error. He will close the connection, but he will not come out of the while loop because I have commented out the break. He will again try to create a new connection and try to send a new packet. Okay, So even if some error happens, our uh, code will not break. It will continue to run until he successfully sends the data. So this is the uh, client code which we will run on our computer or you can run on Raspberry, anything which supports Python. You can run only thing to remember is to provide the ip address of the esp here the ip of the server now let me come back to the server part okay which is going to run on our z board and esp there are very minor modifications i have made from previous tutorial one thing i have added is this extra uh, packet with invalid request so previously uh, we check whether the packet has request for LED or switch, then we do the corresponding thing. I have added one more option. That means if the packet doesn't contain any of this information, if the client sends some uh, random packet, we will make a response with invalid request. Because in client server model, uh, whenever a client makes a request, the server is supposed to respond with some packet. Okay? Otherwise, client may uh, hang waiting for the response so that's why this is added here and that's why here you can see he's checking for invalid in that packet because by accident something happens to packet and if the server doesn't get the proper packet he'll still respond with the invalid request so that's one thing uh, i have done modification another modification is there are certain changes done in this send packet function okay so previously uh, what was happening is the server he sends a packet and he will just go ahead and close the connection now 
that uh, depends on the scenario okay so if you are using a web browser uh, what is expected is the server closes the connection and the browser will wait until he closes the connection then he shows the output then he closes the connection okay so everything works fine but in our code here what happens is as soon as we receive the data you can see here we are closing the connection without waiting for the server Okay, so these are two different scenarios. So if the client closes the connection at the beginning and if the server tries to close after that, that may cause some issues. Okay, so to handle it, uh, I have modified the code here. Again, uh, you can check how it is happening. If you don't get it, you can ask me in the comment the specific detail. These are specific to how clients and servers communicate over the network. So that's the only difference. Otherwise, the code remains exactly the same. So now you can imagine what is really happening. When I start my program, first he will send a message with uh, switch position. He will ask. Uh, that will come here. So he will read the switch position. He will send it back. So that will come here. And he will show me the switch position. He will close. Then he will check whether it is invalid. No, it won't be invalid. Then he will create a new message with uh, LED equal to and the same switch position. He will send it. That will come here. Here. And he will turn on the corresponding LED. And he will send back turn on LED. That will come here. And he, he is supposed to print turn on LED. He will close it. Now this delay is required here. Okay. So between every communication, I mean closing a connection and opening a new connection, there should be some delay. Uh, that has nothing to do with client-server model. That is because of a restriction uh, how we are communicating with the ESP. So we are communicating over UART, you know, and the speed of UART is much lower compared to this network speed. So what happens is if you try to send the next packet uh, without any delay, uh, because of the UART communication between each uh, packet transaction, it is possible that the ESP uh, may miss that packet. If you put it zero, he will definitely miss it. So you need to put some value here. Uh, I found like uh, putting 100 millisecond is more than enough. Within 100 millisecond, he will successfully close that connection and uh, he will send that information over UART so that he can successfully get the next packet so that's why this delay is here so if it is not working again maybe you have to fight fine tune it a little bit maybe you have to slightly increase it a little bit okay so now i will uh, show you the output it will be same as the one which you saw which you saw at the beginning of the video uh, no difference so i'm turning on my board now i'm programming So you can see like before uh, the sequence is exactly same he tries to start and he gives the IP address so this IP address we have to take from here that's the IP of the server and we need to supply it here okay again once he connects it remains same so once the server is up we can run the Python so Let's give python my client dot py and test queue. Now you can see switch position and and 0.1 second uh, it makes very minor difference. And you can see in between this timeout is coming. That means he didn't get a response uh, within one second. Okay, that's why that timeout error is coming. That print is coming from here because an exception. But he retries, so no issues. Now let me turn off all the switches so you can see they all turned off so whenever I am changing the switch position that will be reflected here okay and the corresponding LED is also turns up now once you are happy with all these things maybe you can remove all these prints also these two prints and instead of providing the IP like this hard coded 
we can just give it as an argument okay so let me rerun it so this time what you do is python my client and the ip address you can just give it as an argument here and you won't see any print here except when there is a timeout and whenever i am changing the switch position i can see on the board the corresponding leds are turning on okay so i hope this is a useful tutorial and you can try it out thank you